In this video, I'm going to present toys that I think are awesome. They're either toys that we've had for a long time and we continue to play with every single day, or they're toys that I've researched and had recommended to me by a bunch of different moms and toys that I'm choosing to buy this holiday season. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and like on this video, and now let's jump in. All right, so my first toy that I'm gonna talk about is magnetiles. Most of the toys on this list are gonna be made out of natural materials like wood or cloth, but magnetiles is my one plastic exception just because they are so awesome. Some things I like about them is um, they're great for a whole range of ages. My When my daughter was one, she would play with these almost every day, even if she could just stick a couple together. And now that my kids are four and two, they still, you know, are, building forts, rocket ships, houses to put their dolls in or to put their little horses in. And I've had friends tell me that their 10, 11 year olds still play with them every day. They're pretty easy to travel with. They're heavy, but you can you know, big, bring a big stack of them. Um, they can get pricey. The actual Magnetile brand is quite expensive, but we actually have Picasso and Play Mags, which we just ordered from Amazon. I'll have a link below. And they're about half the price of Magnetiles and um, are honestly just as good. So Magnetiles, I think, are one toy that, again, it's open-ended, kids can play with for hours and hours and hours and years and years and years. And so even though it does you know, take up space or has a lot of little pieces that in theory could be lost, they stick together, which means cleaning up easy and um, the hours of fun you get out of it for the space they take up, I think is totally worth it. Um, if you really want to avoid plastic in your house, there is a wooden version. It's called Tegu. They're basically wooden blocks with magnets inside, so they stick together in a similar way, but they're made of wood. The one reason we don't have those is they are way more expensive. Um, and so, you know, we, we could maybe afford 10 of those blocks, but we have about you know, a hundred of magnetiles and my kids are always asking for more just so they can build bigger and bigger, bigger things. So um, that's why we've gone with the magnetiles and I recommend them to anybody who doesn't have them yet. The next toy I recommend is train tracks. Um, these are just simple wooden train tracks. Someone actually gave them to us. You might be able to find them for free or cheap on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. And then our trains that we have currently are actually from Ikea. Um, one of them has a motor, so it goes around, which is entertaining for my four month old and also for me as an adult. We make train tracks all over the place. And again, this pairs really well with the magnetiles. They can make, you know, houses and bridges and things for the trains to go through. Um, or they can build a really elaborate train track and then have a magnetile city around it. So again, this is something that is open ended. It's wooden. This could be something that you can find for really cheap and there's no shame in giving your kid a gift for Christmas or birthdays that's been a giveaway gift. In fact, often when someone is giving away toys, I'll hide it until the next birthday or holiday and wrap it up and give it to them and they have no idea whether it's brand new or whether a kid has been playing with it before. Okay, as you can tell, I'm really into building things. I actually went to MIT and was an engineer and I want my kids to enjoy building things as well. So. The next toy I can highly recommend are Lincoln Logs. I loved these as a kid and I just think they're so great. I mean, it's simple, it's just pieces of wood, but there is so much that kids can do with them. Um, again, these were actually given to us by um, a lady whose kids are all in her 30s and 40s and she said they'd just been sitting in her attic and so she let us have them. Um, I will say that these definitely are for kids or who are older. So my four-year-old is just starting to figure out how to build with them. My two-year-old has no idea how they're actually supposed to be built. She still has fun with them, whether it's, you know, using them as musical instruments or, you know, laying them out, making some kind of fence for her horses. Um, but I will say for a five, six, seven-year-old, these could be a really, really great gift. Again, they can be pricey, so definitely look out for people who are giving them away on Facebook or Craigslist or things like that. Um, but again, an open-ended toy that can, again, pair really well with other things. So you can have train tracks with a magnetile and Lincoln Log Cities and, you know, little figurines and things like that, which can um, lead to hours and hours of play versus one battery powered singing toy that just kind of plays for them and they just sit there and watch. All right, my last building toy is Legos. So whether you have little kids and you're buying or getting these Duplos, if you have, you know, maybe three, four year olds and you're getting kind of the medium sized Legos, or if you have older kids, four, five, six, 
you know, all the way up to 13, 14, um, and you're getting the little Legos, I think you really cannot go wrong with Legos. They're so much fun to be had. My kids make zoos, they make fish, houses, all sorts of things with Legos. Um, and again, it pairs well with all the other toys. I'm definitely not saying you need all of these toys. I'm saying pick a few. I think every kid needs something that they can build with. And the truth is that kids play more when there's less. It's It feels ironic and counterintuitive. It feels like, oh, I need to get my kids all these toys and totally fill their playroom up so they just will never be bored. But the truth is when a kid walks into a room and there is just toys crammed in every little nook and cranny and shelf and under the bed, it's so overwhelming they don't even know where to start. All right, the next thing I think every kid needs, especially to go along with all this stuff to build with, is some kind of figurine or character with which to pretend play. So some options we have, we have these little wooden doll people, just so they can play pretend, have a family, have someone to ride the train or to live in the magnetile house. You can have animals, you know, little wood animals. Um, these are horses. But yeah, I think just some kind of figurine that kids can play pretend with is really important. I would say stay away from figurines or toys that are very limited in what they can be. So for instance, if you get them an Elsa or an Anna doll, they can only ever be Elsa and Anna. Um, that Elsa can't suddenly be a big scary monster that's going to knock down the magnetile house um, because it's Elsa and they know what Elsa is supposed to be, what she's supposed to look like. They've probably seen Frozen 50 times and so it's really limiting their imagination. Whereas if you give them, you know, random little boy who can be anything, they just can do so many more things with it because this boy doesn't have a name, you know, there's not a movie to go along with him. So it's really all up to them and their own creativity and imagination to um, create a story and to play with him versus just to recreate what Disney has taught them. If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit like. I put a lot of work into this video because I want your kids to have good quality toys. So um, give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe if you're new here. Now, the next toy is some kind of safe secret hiding place for kids um, this can be as cheap or as expensive as you'd like to make it so one thing we do is we have bunk beds we will hang you know a blanket over the bunk bed and create kind of a little fort inside the bed my kids love it love to play in there love to read books um, play with their babies things like that um, another thing you could get is they make these really cool teepees out of just wooden poles and cotton. You can get them on Amazon, Target. With young kids, like one, two, three, four, um, they don't really need a dollhouse to play with because they are so little, they can pretend like they are in a dollhouse. The next great, great gift, especially if a kid doesn't already have one, is some kind of doll. And this is for boys or girls. That's a whole nother video in itself, whether or not boys should be playing with dolls. But I think having a doll for kids to, again, imagine with, um, take care of. If you have younger kids, it's so, so fun for your three or four year old to care for their baby as they're watching mom care for, you know, your six month old. Um, we have a bunch of different dolls. I would recommend getting dolls of color. There are so many studies that show that um, in white kids and kids of color that they often show a preference for white dolls or think the white dolls are better or smarter. And so I think one way that we can counter just systemic racism and injustice is by teaching our kids all about different races. So even if your kids are white, I think having dolls of color are really important. We have kind of a whole spectrum in our house, um, partly because I'm white and my husband's black and so my kids are mixed. And so we just have our dolls who, you know, are all different shades, which I think is fun for them to um, play with and see themselves in the dolls, but also see other people in the dolls. All right, next I think every kid should have some kind of materials to craft and to create with. Um, again, this can be simple. Take a minimalist approach here. A pack of crayons and a pad of paper is really all kids need. Uh, my honest action art teacher and she, um, hates coloring books because the the art and the coloring is already done for the kid a blank piece of paper where kids can just color and say you know look i made a volcano and a sky and some rocks or look i made a river and a heart or you know whatever they have in their mind um, to just learn how to scribble and create and express themselves is so so important so again simple here is best crayons are better than markers crayons require a kid to 
have a better grip and to put more pressure on them to show up on the paper whereas markers you can just kind of scribble with without using any of your hand muscles and so crayons are really important for helping kids to develop the muscles in their hands to then learn how to write and have proper handwriting skills so definitely opt for crayons over markers and simple over really complicated or fancy coloring books paint is good too um, Play-Doh can be fun, but we actually often will make our own. All right, the next stuff that um, I'm getting for my kids actually this holiday season is stuff to cook with and stuff to clean with. If you haven't noticed already, kids love to pretend like they're doing what you're doing. And it's how they learn how to be adults and how to grow up and you know be individuals who know how to clean a house and know how to cook and take care of, care of themselves. So some things I'm actually getting for my four-year-old this year are these... Um, they're little curvy knives. I'll show a picture on the screen, but it allows them to cut a cucumber, cut grapes, you know, cut their own fruit or vegetables and help you either cook at night for dinner or help them prepare their own snack. And um, they're much safer than a traditional knife, so they're much less likely to cut themselves, but you're still giving them the independence and confidence to do something themselves rather than always have to ask mom to cut their apple or cut their cucumber. And then cleaning stuff. Um, this is a very Montessori idea, but um, getting things a child size broom or a child size mop or you know little spray bottles that they can go around and dust kids love that they would probably much rather have a broom and a mop than some big fancy toy they saw on tv because they want to be like you and that's what they see you doing and um to be able to get to clean with you or to have this kind of bonding activity that you guys do together is um, a great way for you to get your house clean for your kids to have fun and for you guys to all spend time together Okay, another great gift idea for your kids is a set of instruments. So we used to go to music together classes and my kids' favorite time of the class was always when they dumped out the bin of instruments and they just played a song and the kids just got a bang and jam and do whatever they wanted with instruments. Um, so some things we have, we definitely need to increase our stash. Um, we have this fun drum. We have some recorders. Um, this music maker I actually made myself. It's just an old water bottle that I filled with rice. Um, you can also take old Easter eggs and fill them with rice, put tape around so the kids can't open them. And those are great little shakers, especially for babies. We have some bells and other maracas and things like that. Kids just have a blast with these. If you have a baby and a four-year-old, um, this can be a really good option because kind of everyone in the family can play with it. Your baby will love to eat on it, chew it, chew it, shake it, suck on it, whatever. And your three, four year old will probably be able to have some rhythm and actually, you know, get up, dance around, play with it. You can either put music on for everyone to make music with, or you can just have them make their own and sing along with this. All right, another thing that I'm planning to create this spring and buying some toys hopefully this Christmas season is a sensory bin. So a sensory bin is you just take a large bin and you fill it with rice or beans or pasta or a mix of them. Um, basically whatever you can find for really cheap and then you have things to put in it. So one thing I'm going to be purchasing, I'll have a link below, is just some wooden spoons, shovels, things that they can dig with um, so that they can play with those in the sensory bin. It's also great. You can hide, you know, little animals in it or maybe little balls. You can use measuring cups, teaspoons, and kids can just play with it um, for hours and hours. The really only thing is if you're playing with it indoors, be really careful about them not spilling it. So our rule will be, you know, as soon as we see rice or beans starting to spill out on the floor, it's time to put the sensory bin away. And if we're playing with it outside, making sure, again, we're not just dumping it everywhere and ruining it or letting water get in it because then it will get all moldy. Okay, the next necessity for every single kid is to have a quality library full of great books. Um, some of our favorites, you know, for the younger, my two-year-old basically has this whole book memorized and can just read it. Um, polar bear, polar bear, what do you see? This is a huge favorite, Knuffle Bunny. As you can tell, it's been taped and ripped and taped many, many times because we just read it over and over and over again. We love jam berry. It's all about picking berries. It's especially fun in the summer as we're eating tons of berries to read about picking them. Um, this is actually one of our music together books. This pairs really well with the instruments. The kids will look through it and they know which songs are which based on the pictures and can sing those songs. Uh, another classic, Make Way for Ducklings. Um, I could go on and on and on about books. If you have questions about 
book recommendations, definitely leave a comment below. I would love to give you some more recommendations. I also love um, Read Aloud Revival. If you just Google her, she makes awesome book lists. She'll have a book list for each month of the year, a picture book list. So you can look at December picture books and she'll recommend, you know, ones that are all about Christmas or snow or winter, or you can look up July picture books and they're all about summer and the beach and boats. Um, so her book lists are awesome. I actually very, very rarely buy books. We generally just go to the library every you know week or two. Um, we probably check out about 50 books a month, to be honest. And um, my kids could read independently on their own for about an hour. You know, we read books to them before naps, before bed, and other times throughout the day. So books are just so great. It's a great way for kids to learn, too. Um, you know, if your kid's going to school for the first time, get some books about going to school. If they are going on a trip, get some books about going on a, on a plane or a train. Yeah, books are just so awesome and so important for a kid's development and yeah, learning how to read eventually as they get older. So um, books, 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 can't recommend that enough. I wanna pause here too and say, don't be afraid to ask your family and friends for what you want your kids to have. They may just, you know, if you have an aunt or, a, or you know, a grandma, whoever, they may just walk into Walmart and grab whatever toy looks the flashiest or the most fun, but it's probably, again, just plastic junk, battery powered, annoying, and it's gonna be something you wanna give away in a few months or that your kids hardly ever play with, or they just play with it so much, they just watch it play, they're not actually being imaginative or playing with other toys. So don't be afraid to make an Amazon wish list or request what you want or say, hey, we're actually giving away most of our toys and we're just trying to create a minimalist approach when it comes to playing and our play room so please just get me these few things to fill in the gaps um, but don't get me anything else so that we can you know have a complete minimalist playroom where my kids can actually thrive and play versus just be overwhelmed by all the stuff and you can also ask for experiences things like a membership to the zoo or a membership to the aquarium versus more toys or um, things your kids actually need so instead of another cute dress for your little girl say hey we could actually really use a pair of high quality outdoor shoes that they can just wear every single day, that they can explore the forest with, that they can go to the beach with, that they can just live in every single day rather than another pair of cute shoes that are terrible for their feet or a cute dress that is flashy and shiny but not super practical. So don't be afraid to make your preferences known so that you're um, not getting stuff you're just gonna wanna give away. Okay, the next thing on my list that we actually don't have yet, but I'm hoping to get this year, is some play silks. So play silks are um, kind of like a receiving blanket. It's just a piece of fabric made out of silk, and they're often dyed different colors, like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Um, like I said, we don't have them now, so my kids will use these blankets, and they will wrap their baby on their chest to wear their baby, like they see me wearing a baby, or they'll make a fort with it, or they'll make a cape with it, or um, they like to lay it on the ground and pretend they're all riding in the train, and they get their babies in the train, and um, so even just a piece of simple cloth can be so much fun. One thing I like about the Play six Silks, they're really light, they can pack down to almost nothing, which is great for traveling, um, and then they're also different colors, so going back to our trains and building they can lay a blue one out and have it be a river that the train has to cross or they can lay a green one out and have it be a mountain that the um, their horses or figurines have to graze on um, the red one could be lava there's just so much you can do with these and they um, I've been holding off getting them because I keep thinking like, oh, do I really want to just spend money on some cloth? But the more I've heard from different parents and the more I've done research on them, they really do seem like an awesome toy. And because we will be traveling a lot, um, they are something we are going to, I think, finally invest in because they pack down so small. Oh, they also go great with musical instruments, playing music, dancing with your cloths, things like that. Okay, another toy we just got actually for my daughter's birthday is one of these balance boards. This is more of a Waldorf idea um, and it has been so fun already. So kids can stand on it and practice balancing. It's so good just to build up their core and their sense of balance. Um, it can be a tunnel that kids or dolls or figurines have to crawl under. It can be a hill to roll cars down or trains down or balls down. It can be um, 
they can act out the three billy goats gruff, have a troll underneath, and you know the animals have to cross over. Um, it can hold up to 480 pounds, so you as an adult can stand on it. If you're working from home, um, it would be great at your standing desk to be balancing on it or standing on it this way. Um, it's much better for your posture than sitting in an office chair. Um, Again, there are so many uses to it. My kids already will put it up on the couch and climb up it and slide down it. So if you have kids who are bouncing off the walls, especially in the winter time, this is kind of a, um, a little playground for them where they can just be physical and active um, in a bunch, bunch of different ways. They have to will lay down on it and rock too as if they're going to sleep or rock their babies on it. Um, so it goes great with a lot of the other toys, the trains, the babies. There's so much you can do with it. And again, it's made of wood. The truth is plastic is not really good for anyone. One, there's all sorts of studies that show plastic is emitting chemicals. Plastic to the touch is cold and sterile um, versus wood, especially for a baby who is so tactile and figuring out their information, their environment through their senses and feeling and sucking and touching. Wood is just so much more um, varied and imaginative and warm to the touch. A few more things that I think every kid should need. Some balls. This is simple. Whatever balls you can find. Tennis ball, bouncy ball, whatever. I think every kid can have fun with a ball, whether they're inside or outside. Games. Now, I am not a huge proponent of games because, again, I feel like there's something that may only hold a kid's attention for 20 minutes and can take up a decent amount of space or can have a lot of little pieces that just create a mess. And so it, it, you kind of have to weigh like, okay, does that 20 minutes of fun that um, my kids had with it balance out the mess, the space it takes? They're often made of plastic. Um, you kind of have to weigh which, what's important to you. We do have a few games that we like. We um, like Zingo. My kids, my two and four year old can play it totally on their own. Um, it's also fun a little bit for us adults to play um, sequence for kids this game actually requires a little more strategy than most kids games which are just based on luck so it's a little more fun for adults and the games are good to get again the family together playing something together so that is one reason I like them um, Hi Ho Cherio is okay. It again is pretty much just based on luck. You you spin a spinner and basically whatever the spinner says you do so there's not really any strategy so um, as adults, we don't really enjoy it, but um, my kids can play it together, which is nice. But yeah, I would say maybe one or two games. I wouldn't go big on games because, um, again, this has a million little pieces and my kids would much rather just, you know, dump these all over the floor than actually play the game how it's supposed to play. And there's just one way of doing it. It's not open-ended and imaginative. The same goes for puzzles. We do love puzzles. My four-year-old actually can sit down and do a couple puzzles totally on her own and entertain herself for like 30, 40 minutes, which is awesome. If I'm cooking dinner or something, putting one kid to bed, she can stay up and do puzzles. Um, you know, the younger kids, Melissa and Doug make some great like knobby wooden puzzles. And then as they get older, they can do like 50 piece puzzles. Um, my only caveat with puzzles is again, they take up space and often once they've done it five or 10 times, they're kind of done with it. So puzzles are something that I would say definitely buy used or get hand-me-down for free, or maybe find a couple families that you can do a puzzle swap with. So maybe have a bunch of puzzles, do them all a couple times, pass them on to a new family and get a whole new set of puzzles that your kids can do. All right, and then finally, I just wanna end with some outdoor gear. Bikes, I think every kid needs a bike. Balance bikes are incredible. My kids got really good at balance bikes around two, and my um, daughter learned how to ride a pedal bike at three. So um, balance bikes just allow kids to learn how to balance. Training wheels are terrible. They don't teach you how to balance. I would also say some other outdoor gears, a sled for the winter, and um, just good clothing. They need good quality waterproof mittens that won't fall off waterproof hats, rain pants or snow boots or um, snow pants um, because my philosophy is there is no bad weather, only bad gear. So I think if your kid doesn't have good gear that they can get outside in any in any weather, I would say that is a great, great gift. Yesterday it was pouring rain and the puddles in our street were like six inches deep and our kids were basically just swimming out in the street. But they had good gear and they were fine and had a blast. So definitely invest in some good um, quality layers, shoes, whatever your kids needs to be able to have fun outdoors. 
Um, and then finally, if this has been all overwhelming for you and you're like, this is so much money, I could never buy all of this. One, I don't want you to buy all of this. I'm saying this is a review of some toys I think that are great and are not a waste of money. So pick a couple for this season and then maybe next birthday, maybe next Christmas, buy another one or two or find another hand-me-downs. Um, and then over time, you can create a playroom that you and your kids really can thrive in. I would also say don't forget that the greatest gifts of all time are a cardboard box, some mud, sticks, rocks, pine cones, all things that are free and that your kids can find outside. So um, before you think, wow, this I could never get any of this stuff, um, outside there is plenty of things for your kids to play with and really they don't need much other than a cardboard box and a couple of sticks. And I do wanna um, talk about storage a little bit. So as you can see, we have a lot of plastic bins here. I don't love storing things in plastic bins. I've talked about how I don't love plastic. We are trying to make a conversion to having just open shelves where things are just sitting on the shelf open so the kids can see it and just play with it um, rather than it be hidden away in a bin. And um, also using more wooden baskets or cloth baskets to store things in. I would also say, um, you can rotate your toys so it's kind of always feels like Christmas. So you can have a shelf with, you know, maybe one shelf has magnet tiles, the next shelf has a couple books, the next shelf has some figurines, and the next shelf has some crayons and paper. You know, and all the other toys are hidden away in a closet. And then after a week, maybe you switch out the magnet tiles for some train tracks and trains. And then maybe a couple days later, you switch out some of the books for some new books. And then maybe a couple days later, you switch out the crayons and paper for some puzzles. So you're constantly doing this rotation where they're always having these new toys. I mean, yes, it's been sitting in their closet, they played with it before, but to them it's new if they haven't seen it in a week or two. And to them, um, train tracks and horses can be a totally different game or thing to play with than train tracks and magnet tiles. So as you switch things out, your kids will learn how to be creative and to imagine. Also, if you get a bunch of these toys and your kids just don't even know what to do with them, don't be discouraged. If they've constantly had toys that play for them, that are battery power, that are plastic, that don't require much imagination, they may not really know what to do at first. But if you sit down and you play with them and you imagine with them and the more they have them, the more imaginative they'll get and the more fun they'll have with them. I just wanted to make one more note. Um, I'm releasing this video for Christmas 2020 as a holiday buying guide, but if you're watching this any time of the year, this is all still applicable. If you're shopping for your daughter's birthday in May, or you have a niece or nephew you to buy for some other time of the year, this is all still applicable. Um, all these links below, will um, I'll try to keep them updated in case any of them go out of date. Um, but again, these are all toys that have stood the test of time. None of these are going to be you know, no longer the latest trend or fashion in six months from now. These are all toys that have been around for years and years and years and will still be fun to play with for years and years to come. If you've enjoyed this video, please, again, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up because I put a lot of work into it and I would love more parents to find it. And um, hit subscribe so you can see a lot of my other videos where, where I talk about how to raise kids naturally, how to birth naturally, and um, how to be a natural mom. And before you leave, don't forget to leave a comment. Which of these toys are you most excited to get? Or which, to which of these do you already have that your kids just absolutely love? I'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.